Hello friends and welcome to See Joy Yoga. So um, this week we are focusing on, um, in our classes and in my filming, I'm focusing on the foundation of our body, where we standing anyway, right? Which is to say our feetsies. Um, and so in the longer classes, we did a section where I rolled out. So I'm gonna pull that out and just do a quick breakdown for rolling out for just something that you can really easily do in a, in a short amount of time. And it's so, so, so good for your feet. Um, for my friends who have feet issues, you're going to take it easy, do what you can. If there are things you can't do, don't do them. We don't hurt our feet, right? And we don't have to use really crazy hard pressure. I think that's something that people tend to do with their fascia. Um, and even their muscles that I don't necessarily believe helps the fascia open up. So you're gonna need a ball. Um, I would say this is a, a plastic golf ball, um, but, but you don't wanna have a golf ball. Golf ball, that's just too dang hard. But a tennis ball or a racket ball, or um, you know, I joke around in the writing, but I'm like Fido's ball, but ew, that's so gross. But hey, whatever you got, grab it, click pause, grab it and come back. If you do have a golf ball, it might be helpful for one little thing we're gonna do after we roll our feet out. So you can just put those down on the ground for now, assuming they're not gonna roll away. And I'd like you to just start by standing into the asana. Right, yes, we're gonna get to rolling out, but you wanna know what it does, don't ya? So stand up nice and tall in mountain pose and just notice your feet on the ground. Let it be just that simple. Instead of getting very technical, the feet go here, the this goes there, the this goes there, the da 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 da. Without doing a whole lot, notice where your weight is. For me personally, I pronate. I go to my pinky toe edge, and I tend to kick back into my right heel a little bit and over to the left a little bit. Right. So, so what do you do in your body? And just kind of notice that again when you're not trying to control it very much. And I mean, I could have had you start with wherever you stand without being in Tadasana, because then my feet are out like ducks and there's all kinds of other things that happen too. So it's always an interesting self-study. Okay, so now you have a, a, an idea of where your weight is, what's happening, if there's any soreness on the bottom of the foot, any sensation, things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with the right foot. And I'm gonna do my left, so I'm mirroring you. And you're gonna start by actually not rolling yet. I want you to go ahead and I want you to wrap your toes around the ball and widen your toes as much as you can. Any of my friends who have bunions, you don't wanna kill the dang bunion, but if you wanna to try to start working it, one of the thing, tools you can use is coming down and you can literally use your fingers and try to spread, even if you don't have bunions, but particularly with bunions. It goes into internal rotation and wah, all kinds of crazy things. Um, and so just pausing and just letting your feet spread over that. Right? Now, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna move the ball back just a little bit till you're right on the ball mounds is what I often refer to them as, right? The ball mounds of the feet. And again, you have a transverse arch right there. You're not very familiar with it probably, but it's one of the main, most people talk about three arches, some schools talk about four. I believe in there being four arches. So this is one of the uh, arches we don't often think about, we'll say. So just go ahead and again, I'm trying to let my, my feet wrap around that so that the transverse arch gets support moving up. And then you're gonna move back and you're gonna move basically to the center of all of your three or four arches, whichever school you come from. And again, I'm just putting a little bit of pressure down. I'm not crazy weighting it and right? I'm just hanging out there and I'm just starting to let my foot wrap around the ball. And then the last place we're gonna get is we're gonna go right to the front of your heel, your calcaneus bone, right where your plantar fascia begins. And you're just gonna, again, put a little bit of weight down on that. Again, if you find yourself really wanting to bear down, now racquetball is pretty soft, you might need to come down on a little bit more. But otherwise, you know, again, it's not, we're not like bearing into this stuff right now. We're just starting to put some weight on it and let that skin and that fascia start to understand and have a conversation. Now, first I want you to just roll around really light-like, really light. Right? We'll get into a heavier rolling in a bit for my people who are like, I need more, I don't have sensation. Just really rolling out lightly through the toes, get over as far as you can. Um, and by the way, balls love to dart around with this stuff. So uh, uh, it'll dart and then you grab it and you bring it back. And, or you get a dog to bring it back for you. Ew, gross. 
<laughs> my cats don't do it for me. And then you're gonna go ahead and now just pause. <clears throat> we're gonna start, I'll get you to the rolling, I swear to goodness, right? But we're gonna start by rolling first the sideways or what I often refer to as stripping. So your heel is down on the ground and you're gonna go back to those toes and you're gonna rock back and forth now and move up to the ball mounds of the toes and you're gonna rock back and forth. I say this is gonna be a quickie, but man, it won't be, it'll, it'll still probably be like a 15 to 20 minute video. Um, you could shorten it for sure, but this is such good stuff. And then go to the middle of the arches and roll back and forth and let your foot go through pronation and supination. It's one of the joints of the ankle that you start to work with, right? And then you're gonna go that plantar fascia point, right? It runs across the bottom of the full, but this is the uh, foot, but this is the insertion. And my toes are now on the ground so that I'm not worried about balance or anything. Now comes the stuff you've all been waiting for, right? We're going to go ahead and from that fascia, we're going to go to the out inner edge of the foot and we're going to roll forward to the big toe, the ball mound or the toe, whatever you'd prefer. And then you're going to roll back towards the heel. Move over just a little bit and roll to your second toe your index toe, I could call it, if we're correlating it to the fingers, right? And then you're gonna roll to your middle finger. Oh, so unyoga like I just flipped you off. And then you're gonna go to your ring finger, right? Your ring toe. And then you're gonna go to your pinky toe. And then from there, one more piece, and that is, this is where the small ball might be helpful <laughs> if this feels like too much. You're actually gonna do um, what I call toe splits, right? And that is, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna try to have your big toe stay on one side and your, your other toes stay on the other side and try to bring your toes into splits. Again, you could always come down, and I usually at home, I, I should have pulled a chair over, I usually at home, who gives a crap about balance right now? It's about your toes and your feet. And then you're gonna try to switch that. You're gonna try to put your big toe on the other side. Try not to use your hands if you can, your fingers, right? But if you need to, who gives a crap? Go down there and try to separate them out. And then go ahead and release that. And now you're going to stand in Tadasana. And I didn't show it, but this might be, you know, in the beginning it might be easier to try to do your toe splits on a smaller ball. And pause. And stand in that same Tadasana and just be curious about what's happening in your right foot. Do you notice it just in the sole of the foot or is it affecting the top of the foot, the ankle, the knee, the hip? I mean, when we start to give our foot foot health, it makes a difference from everything there up. Many times, um, ankle issues, knee issues, hip issues, some of the things going on, the ailments, might stem from how we stand in our feet. And then notice the difference between right and left. You ready? Over 72,000 nerve endings come down into the foot. Um, first, we're just going to round our toes around it. Again, feel free to come down and really work that out. And if you're like, wow, your toes spread so far apart. Yeah, I've been doing this. They didn't in the beginning. And I had the big toe that started is starting to go over towards bunion and all kinds of things, right? And I do this on a pretty dang regular basis. Uh, footwork, foot, I foot, massage my feet every night before I go to bed, et cetera, um, and really try to uh, pay attention to my feet. Move to the ball mounds of the feet. So uh, that is to say that if you feel like you're kind of snaggle-toed and whatever, and you shove those things into shoes all the time, this work can start to, over time, help you with that stuff. And then you're going to go back to the middle of all of the arches. And again, just bearing down a little bit of pressure. It doesn't have to be, grrr, let the fascia know what the heck is going on. And I know I've got some plantar fasciitis friends in our community. So please just, you know, gently and what you can. This can be super therapeutic and awesome for it. But if you're just reaming into it, you know, whatever, whatever that is, I mean, that might just be, oh, on some days and you're making it you know, feel inflamed or pain, more painful, is that beneficial? And then from there, we're gonna go ahead um, and, oh, I'm trying to remember what we did next. Oh, we did the, um, crap, the stripping. I think we're gonna go to stripping. If I forgot something, do it. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're just gonna go back and forth, right, and roll it out trying to let your toes roll over. I call them the reluctant toes, right? One leads and it's like, no, I don't wanna go, like a toddler. And then you're gonna put your um, 
your ball mounds on. And again, this is working through your transverse arch real good for you. We're starting to move the foot into one of the two directions. Coming to the middle of all of the arches, you're like, wait, I can rotate that. But did you know that you have two joints in your ankle? And one is pronation and supination. One is pointing and flexing, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. It just seems like we have the full range. And then you're going to go to that point in front of the calcaneus bone, right? The very front of it, the heel. And you're going to strip back and forth against that. And again, try to get pronation and supination. Don't let it just be a stripping across. Try to get the arc, 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 arc. That's the sound your ankle's making right now. <laughs> and now we come to that other part, right? Where we're going to start at that inner edge and we're going to roll through that medial arch. And for most of us, this is the one that has the most sensation and that we're the most familiar with. And roll back. And now we're going to go to our index toe. And now we're going to go to our middle toe. I'm not flipping off, I swear to goodness, I love you. And now we're going to go to our uh, ring toe. And now we're going to go to our pinky toe. 26 bones in your foot, 33 joints, 107 ligaments, right? And again, our toe splits. So I don't know what's the best view for this, but I'm going to go this way this time. I try to get my big toe on one side and my second toe going on the other side. So it's like, um, you know, for any of my friends who know the um, Sanskrit hamunasana is what we sometimes do with our legs splits. We're doing um, toe hanumasana. <laughs> and then you're going to try to reverse and go the other way. Feel free to go down there with your uh, hands and... And again, this isn't about balance. Feel free to hold a wall or a chair. It, it, this is not at all about balance. And then go ahead and let that go and put that foot down one more time. Let's stand in mountain pose. Be curious about your left foot, where you feel sensation, what the sensation is. Is it positive and is it opening things or is it negative in the sense that it's causing restriction, inflammation, etc.? Any other part of the leg affected? Is it different than the right side? Are you standing differently than when we first stood without rolling out our feet? Close your eyes for just a moment. Feel those feet rooting down into the earth. That's the other thing I love about this work. Man, my feet are solidly planted. I am, I am of the earth. Bring your hands together in front of your chest. Inhale, exhale, bow your head. Just say, taking a moment of gratitude for these darn feet. How about for these darn feet of ours? These beautiful, beautiful feet. Namaste. And if you like this work, uh, again, there's going to be a couple of short ones, but then do the, the, do the longer ones. Take the time. Give yourself an hour and really dive into, it's a full yoga practice, but with a concentration on the feet. It's kind of amazing the awareness that comes into your body about how you stand and what happens in your knees and your legs and other things when you take a full class on your feet. It's kind of incredible, actually. Thank you. Goodbye. Love you just as you are.